We're back again, everybody, with the air compressor saga. Providing I can actually get this to work, it would provide a lot of people that want to do this. Like, is it something you can do with basic tools, without a welder, all that kind of stuff? That would just be awesome. Um, I think that would provide some good value to people and myself. So this whole unit... Just a little bit of force. This is the part that I had modified. I can get that out of there. In order to make this whole compressor work, this shaft was a motor. So there was the outside part of the motor, there was the inside part of the motor, and then I bought just a regular keyed shaft from Princess Auto. And it, it fits in everything perfectly. It fits in these bearings perfectly. These are the bearings that came with the air compressor. But the original shaft, um, which way did this go? Yeah, the original shaft, the part that stuck out the end here and into this, it was machined smaller. So this hole was smaller and the end of this shaft was smaller. And that's so like this was the whole motor shaft, the whole rotor assembly. This was the same size, so it fit in that bearing, but this end came smaller from the factory, would not, like the new shaft would not fit through this hole. So this hole is where I just used the good old drill here and drilled that out. And that is where, um, as I'm going through, this made the same hole perfectly straight all as well. But the size of that hole, this bearing right here, you see the inner race of that bearing? Let me make sure this is showing up on camera okay. So you've got the outer race, and then this is the cover for all the bearings. And then that's the inner race, that's the little silver part. And you see how the hole is right next to that? That inner race is a really, really hardened material. And so when the drill came through, it came in from this side and it hit that race, it tilted it slightly. So it wanted to cut through this race and it ended up um, coming in at a slight angle, which caused the wobbling of the whole shaft assembly. Um, now, let's say I can run this on a single piston. Is there a way that I could just remove this part, slide this right up tight, and then this bearing would actually be um, supporting this end of the shaft still. So there you have it. Right here is just a single piston happily going about its business. And you got all this extra shaft here, but there's a single bearing. So that bearing, it's well pressed in and there, it doesn't really want to move around too much, but you can tell it's like, you wouldn't want to just run a pulley on that with a single bearing. It's too much torque on it. But this guy, I can slide this all the way right tight to there, cut off the excess, and then I've got a much more compact setup, still a perfectly good cylinder. The only thing to consider is the original heads that go on like this. You've got a threaded outlet right here and you've got a threaded inlet right here. But between the pistons, there's just these press fit rods like that. So in order to do this properly, I would have to close this one and thread this one. If there's enough here that I could tap that, then you can, you can get a fitting, essentially whatever this fitting is right here, just get the fitting that's the size up so that I can thread this into this hole. Heck, that almost works. Ooh, it's like self-threading. Um, but yeah, and then just plug this end with a similar fitting. I wonder if that actually, that might actually be able to thread directly into the existing hole. That would be super handy because then essentially what I want is I want the threaded part here and a threaded part here and just close off the ends. Whereas right now, these are both gonna blow air out that one's closed off already. I mean, I have a welder, so I could close this off with my welder, but I think it would make sense to just get a plug and thread this in, thread that in, plug that. There's your outlet, put your outlet there. Now you've got an inlet and an outlet, single piston, um, all in a nice short block with providing you solve the issue with this mounting on the shaft. If, if I can reuse the existing shaft, if I don't have to go buy one of these shafts, this isn't a problem and I don't have any weird wobbling. And what you actually have is a 3000 hour compressor life for 
$400 with a tank, this could be good. I'm liking this. But right now, this mates together beautifully. Like a, it's factory to factory. And I don't want to mess with that. I can't, I can't put it straight up like this because there's a gap. But if I, if I cut off this very end of this compressor piece, I can butt this right up tight like that. Redneck Milling 101. I'm under no illusion these gloves are going to keep my hands safe. This feels fairly well held and it's flat against the fence and flat against the bottom. Hope for the best here, guys. How to mill. Please work. Please work. Okay, that's as far as we go until we make contact. So maybe I can flip it and get the other side, but that worked. Misaligned by that little bit. That is not bad. This I need to cut off as well. Yes, this rotates. Um, in the hopes of making this as clean of a project as possible, I've, I've got the clamp on here to kind of hold it straight since it's a round edge against the fence. Let's give this our best try. Look how level that cut is. That is practically a machine shop here at uh, Utmost Outdoors Engineering. Let's go see how this all fits together. This is my factory edge. So that's gonna be what actually butts up against this. What this gives me is I've got a bearing right here that would, in its original location. And then I've got a bearing over here. And this bearing can now support if I were to take the pulley off the end here and just slide it on over here. And I've actually got like a compact-er unit. Doesn't matter whether you rotate this left or right. It basically just moves the piston up and down. It's the, the valving in this head that determines which direction the air flows. If I leave this pulley on this end, it's a longer distance. The bearing's here to the pulley. So there's more bend on the shaft versus pulley there to there. So that's kind of why I would want it on the other end. Optionally, I could slide this to the end. I'm gonna pull this pulley and see what that looks like. And of course, pull the cover. There's a, a bearing here and the shaft can just slide back and forth. No worries there. This um, has one of these guys screwed in to lock it into place. So it, it's the shaft is staying put because of that. So I can cut this shaft, move it left and right. And that's what's working. And the only thing we had to do was drill this hole to the size of the new shaft because this hole was originally smaller. Everything's together. Um, I'm using the seal from the far cylinder from the intake with all the brass shavings. And it did look like this seal might be very slightly thicker around the edges. I can't quite tell. I am going to add some oil to this right now because I, I want to test this. And if that is my issue, a little bit of oil around there. Again, not for breathing, but just make sure that that's actually... It's going to fix any issues with the actual seal temporarily. The original compressor came with both of these to, to bolt the sides together and sort of like one was for with this between and one without. Um, it turns out these shorter ones actually work into the threads on the far side. There's one there. Got the other one here and it's actually going to bolt together. No need for anything special. Everything came with this compressor. I'm loving it.
I don't like to torque things with the drill like that. Make sure that this is not like rotated or twisted. Because then if it unrotates, it'll untorque. Oh, this is gonna work. There we go. And then I just gotta put on the pulley. This is sort of the final format, what you might expect. But essentially a single piston, your intake, plug this end off or plug this end off and that's your intake. And this is where your pressure comes out. I can't for the life of me get this thing to make any real air right now. Um, just spinning it by hand, if it was like a good seal in there, it, it should just work and it's not doing that. So it's, it's pretty worn out, but that is, that is your final product. All right, guys, full disclosure. I've been working on this for the last two hours and I just could not get compression. I went so far as to put gear oil in there to see if that would help. And it turns out this seal, I took a light and with this seal on the piston like that, the piston going up and down, when, when it sort of like goes like this, I could see light coming through the edge. It was such a big gap. And I think it's just the way it was twisted or spun and it's so worn out, guys. It's so worn out. It's just not gonna work. But what I thought was a very stiff piece, I was able to actually bend this flat. Let me uh, hold this up here for you. But like actually bending this thing totally flat like that, and then I bent it the other way. So instead of it, it being a, a cup like this, it's now a cup like that. I was actually able to, it took a while to sort of massage it, but it didn't crack or anything. So it was sticking straight out, bent up. Now it's sticking straight out, bent down, and then I flipped it so it's still bent up. Um, I think you want it bent up so that as it approaches the top of the cylinder, the pressure actually presses it against the cylinder wall to keep that pressure. So I've done that, and now you can hear a difference. If I put my fingers here, even slow RPM, I can feel it's sucking on them. They're actually like stuck on. And at this end, you can hear the air coming out. So the seal is back. The only thing I'd do differently is I would keep these little support feet as part of this end. That can be done on a future air compressor, but this'll work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the drill, just the same chuck on the drill, six inch thing here, same RPM as before, nice short unit. Let's actually do this right now. I have such an incredible mess of stuff everywhere. I've just been taking it apart, putting it back together. Could not wrap my head around why I was getting no compression. Let's get the tank up here. Actually, there's one more thing I do need to do. I'm gonna screw this on to the outlet. I'm gonna leave both inlets open and I'm just, I'm just gonna screw it on. Hopefully this works. Keep it straight. I can feel that it biting already, like brass against aluminum is. I think this might seal. There might be enough resistance now that this drill chuck is gonna start slipping. How quickly can we pressure up the tank? Pressure's rising, pressure's rising. This was, this was leaking air. Doesn't seem to be now though. So I'm just gonna, we'll do the fast forward thing. We'll see if this actually pressures right up now. We kind of seem to be holding a limit of about 30 PSI, but initially it got there fairly quick. Um, so I'm gonna say that that seal flipped the other way, still not gonna be quite perfect, but That's what we need to see. So it's better than it was. It's clear that flipping that seal around helped, but it's still not like perfect. Um, I am not gonna dive on this compressor. It's, it's too far gone. I'm kind of interested if I were to buy one of these things, not one of these things, because this, it looks good enough. 
But I'll bet you if I bought one of these, if I can actually find one of these for 30 bucks plus shipping, it'll probably be 60 bucks by the time I get it. Wipe all the oil off, stick it in that piston, see if I can get this thing to work. That's a jumping off point for me. Uh, if that doesn't work or depending on what happens next with what you guys want to see, maybe I buy a brand new California Air Tools 2010A and uh, we, we run this from scratch get a good solid because like this thing is tiny guys it's it's just such a good unit <laughs> it weighs I don't know maybe six seven pounds I mean it's not nothing but it, it's it's pretty light you got your belt driven oil free air compressor with a theoretical 3,000 hour lifespan provided you don't just pour brass shavings down the intake like I did uh, due to a bad quick connect. If anyone's just jumping into this, I had a quick connect on the intake and because it was vibrating so much in the engine, it just brass shavings everywhere and killed the seal. Um, I would be happy with that. Like this, this is pretty solid. And even to buy a brand new air compressor just to tear it apart, it seems pretty... I don't know if that makes me feel good, but you get this aluminum air tank, so you don't have to worry about rust and steel and everything. It comes with a regulator. You, you would, running off gas, you have to get your own blow-off valve, which is under this. This is like a silencer for the blow-off valve. Um, but I like this. I like where this is going. And I'd like to continue this project at some point but for now, I think this is, this is the end of the air compressor saga for a little bit. Uh, we'll probably come back to this like mid-winter when I need a project. Maybe I start from scratch, just grab one of these and I'll do a proper like start to finish. Here's how you do this. I will do everything I can to avoid the need for welding um, of all the skills I'm, I'm using and putting together and tools. A welder is the one that sort of stands out. Not a lot of people have that. So I think you can do this without a welder, without a machine shop. I mean, I, I drilled the holes for the pistons with a, a hand drill and yeah, that didn't work out too great, but it works. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we'll just because this was like a, a train of thought as I work, I didn't really put a ton of work into editing this thing. I'll just throw this out when it's ready and uh, it won't be a regular Thursday video. So there should be a video every Thursday coming out that's a little bit more effort put into it. And I'll just sort of toss this as a cherry on top for those who are following this project. I Part of the reason I made this third video is because of the comments. Um, somebody said you could flip the seal around. Apparently you can, and it does help. Uh, somebody said, why don't you see if there's a rebuild kit? Apparently there are parts for this. So it does help um, trying to figure this thing out. And I, I know there's a use for this. People, like, especially in the gold dredging community, in the places you can do that, you belt drive this off your dredge pump, and it's just so convenient. Um... So in that case, you definitely wouldn't have a generator running an air compressor that's electric. You'd, you'd just use the engine that you have. I, I This, next to that WX-15, compact, lightweight package, have this guy, two gallons of air. I, I want this. I just can't afford it right now. So stay tuned and... Uh, Till next time, cheers. Thanks for watching.